Next on Worcester News Tonight, will a new tenant help bring more business to the vacant storefronts of Worcester's Union Station? Plus, it's day 20 of the government shutdown, and the public schools could soon feel the impact from a program helping feed students. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. A key piece of evidence used in drunk driving cases will not be accepted in Massachusetts courts after a ruling Wednesday. Today we spoke with an OUI lawyer who believes it's a step in the right direction. A Massachusetts District Court judge has ruled breathalyzer results gathered from people in Massachusetts cannot be used in current court cases. Lawyer Mike Del Signori says the Office of Alcohol Testing, which maintains breathalyzer tests in Massachusetts, is not accredited. And the judge says it must undergo major reforms before the test can be used. When they become accredited, they're going to have they're going to be subject to internal audits. There's going to be someone else who's going to oversee the Office of Alcohol Testing because they didn't have any independent checks. So they're going to be held to scientific standards. Um, so that's going to be an important step towards reliable results. The decision by Salem District Court Judge Robert Brennan comes after he discovered the Office of Alcohol Testing did not release evidence to lawyers representing defendants that show more than 400 breathalyzer results were flawed. Del Signori says the decision is a step in the right direction and shows the courts are concerned scientific evidence is coming in. Kind of holding a higher standard, making sure that if we have evidence coming to court that we presume people think are, is reliable, we're going to hold them to scientific standards. When asking Dudley Police Chief Stephen Wayner his opinion on the ruling, he says, based on this information, the manner in which breathalyzer results are introduced in court proceedings is currently under review by the Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Association and others in our criminal justice system. Now to a public information session in the city Thursday night, centering around the infrastructure work happening for the new Polar Park. Representatives from the Paw Sox, City of Worcester, as well as National Grid answered the public's questions about plans for the upcoming construction. National Grid currently has power lines underneath where the city is planning to break ground. The company says they're hoping to start working on the issue as soon as possible. Several high voltage underground cables running straight through the footprint of where the city needs to build the ballpark. So in order for the city to be able to meet their deadlines, their timelines, we need to be out of that area by early summer and we need to relocate those lines, which is why we need to begin work immediately. Other companies answering questions tonight were our parent company, Charter Spectrum, as well as Verizon, Eversource and Mass DOT. The Cannabis Control Commission's deal to come to Union Station will help fill some of the building's 15,000 plus feet of vacant retail space. Some of the space has been without a tenant for more than 10 years. And the city and its redevelopment authority are now hoping to the, the acquisition of the CCC is a sign of things to come to Union Station. Our Cam Jandro is live at Union Station tonight. He has more. Cam? Yeah, Anna, the WRA says getting the CCC was important because this retail and commercial space has been empty for almost decades now, and the WRA says it's in, the WRA says Union Station is now open for business. Worcester City Council's approval of a $2 million loan this week will allow Union Station to be renovated in time for the Cannabis Control Commission to move in. We have to do some construction and build out um, for the space to make it work for them. Hopefully we'll get them... Uh, in and running up, uh, up and running uh, by September. The hope is the CCC will be just one tenant setting up in the numerous vacant spaces at Union Station. The Worcester Redevelopment Authority is working to fill as many as they can. The street level spots facing Harding Street are still completely empty more than a decade after they were built. The city of Worcester um, is poised right now to really start expanding and offering uh, opportunities to businesses that haven't existed before. Last year, the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce released a study with suggestions on how to transform the building into an economic boom for downtown. The Chamber's Alex Guardiola believes the city's big baseball announcement last summer is increasing interest in Union Station. Being able to be, you know, a block and a half away from the park will give access to folks to come in, utilize the rail to to come into the city, but also be able to have food and maybe some retail. Union Station 2.0 highlights the more than 600,000 travelers who use the station annually. 
The goal is to grow the building into more than just a transportation hub. But to be able to have that access to have a coffee, read the paper, have some lunch, have some dinner, now they have access to be able to do other things in there but just come in and go home. The WRA says the CCC's move to Union Station shows the state's confidence in the location. And for other interested businesses, the time to talk is now. We want to have a conversation with you. If you want to do business uh, at Union Station, we are open to the conversation. Now, the WRA will be holding their monthly meeting tomorrow in the city of Worcester. They say that one of the big topics tomorrow will be trying to find a good tenant for Union Station so they can get these doors unlocked. Live at Union Station in Worcester, I'm Cam Jandro, Worcester News Tonight. The cost of college tuition is rising across the country. The Greater Worcester Community Foundation is looking to help Worcester area high school seniors plan for their continued education. The foundation has 136 different scholarships available, ranging in size from $300 to $5,000. Around 50% of the scholarships are renewable for two to four years. Liz Nye says the Community Foundation knows the importance of helping students take the next step to college. The achievements of some of these students, it's inspiring. They've worked really hard um, to get to where they are now, and we really want to help them um, get to that next step. Since 1978, the foundation has given $11.2 million in scholarships to Worcester County students. They're accepting applications until March 4th. Federal businesses and employees are feeling the impact of the government shutdown, but soon federal food programs could also be affected. Some schools and food pantries across central Massachusetts say they're hoping it doesn't last much longer. Our Brittany Schaefer has the story. The partial government shutdown is into its third week. Food services funded by the Department of Agriculture could be in trouble if the shutdown continues. The Food that we receive from the United States Department of Agriculture is very important. As I said, it's about two million pounds of food. The USDA gives the Worcester County Food Bank a third of their food. Executive Director Jean McMurray says they give out 109,000 meals every week. She says they need to keep their inventory high to meet demand. Our supply of food from the USDA should be fine through February. Um, but because of the uncertainty, you know, we, we are all wondering what should we be doing, planning. The Department of Agriculture also funds public school meal programs. 1,900 students within the Webster School District eat lunch at school. Food Service Director Ellen Nyland says they are following the shutdown closely. It's important for any student that's eating lunch at school. We don't want any interruption of the program, so we just want it to run uninterrupted, and we're hoping that's what's going to happen. If the shutdown moves into February, McMurray says the food bank likely wouldn't be able to meet the needs of their 118 partner agencies. It would be a big loss. And of course, the best news would be that the government shutdown is over. Here at the Worcester Public Schools, the superintendent says all of their students receive a free breakfast and lunch funded by the federal government and say they are working on alternate solutions if the shutdown continues. In Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. School districts across the state are struggling to find substitute teachers. And while some are able to raise the pay to help attract more employees, the Worcester Public Schools are trying a different approach. Our Chandler Walsh explains. The Worcester Public Schools are among area districts experiencing a shortage of substitute teachers. Superintendent Maureen Benenda says a growing economy and good job market may be factors. There's just generally um, people aren't interested in substitute teaching. The district is trying to solve the issue by recruiting college students and offering a slight pay raise for teachers aides who sub. Benenda says students are put into the back of another teacher's classroom as a last resort. It's not really impacting their learning, but it's not the same as when you have your own teacher right in front of you. This week, the Spencer East Brookfield Regional School District approved a $10 pay raise for substitutes, bringing a day's pay to $95 for teachers with a degree and certification and 80 for subs without them. And that puts us right in the middle. We're just looking to be fair and uh, establish a fair and competitive wage for the region. Superintendent Paul Hawhey says the district noticed a drop in the number of substitutes going into the holidays and knew they had to make a change. We've had uh, other teachers uh, give up their preps uh, to cover classes and that makes for a very long day for our teaching staff 
even our administration at times were pitch hitting and jumping in. In Worcester, Benenda says the rate for subs has been $70 a day for several years and there just isn't enough in the budget to raise it. She says the district first needs more classroom teachers and school psychologists and counselors. Children that we have now coming to school with as a result of a lot of trauma, many of them may be coming to the United States from other countries where they've been in refugee camps. Um, we really want to provide the best services we can. Public education officials say the shortage of substitute teachers is an issue across Worcester County. Benenda says at Worcester Public Schools, they typically have 50 to 75 substitutes a day, but a healthy amount would be 120. In Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Westboro State Hospital is sold to Atlanta home builder Pult Homes with plans to demolish the structure and rebuild. The company has plans to construct 14 buildings with 700 over 55 housing units. The town says demolition permits have been granted but not permitting for the new units. The building was previously owned by the town. A $60,000 grant allowed Needs in Princeton to buy a new handicap accessible van. The van is used to safely transport clients and their service dogs from their home base in Princeton to several other locations. Needs raises and trains service dogs and then pairs them with children and adults with physical or mental disabilities. They say this van will help make transportation much easier. Our clients that are in wheelchairs in particular from one location to another and it provides the opportunity for us to move our, our canines. Uh, most all of our dogs are trained in prison, so there's many times we have to bring a fair number of uh, dogs back to campus. The grant was one of 15 activation fund grants recently awarded by the Health Foundation of Central Mass, totaling more than $1 million.